Hey guys, it's Adrian, and today I'm taking a look at a really unique keyboard. This is the Drunk Deer A75 keyboard with magnetic switches. And yes, I said magnetic switches, not mechanical switches, because this uses the Hall effect to register key presses or actuations. So why should you care that this keyboard has magnetic switches and what does it mean for you? Well, if you're a gamer, it means that on the fly, you can adjust it so that you can have a key press register in as little as 0.4 millimeters of travel distance. And then say you wanna go and type afterwards, you can set it so that your key press registers in 3.6 millimeters, and that's all on the fly without having to change any type of switches. And that makes this a very unique keyboard. I'd like to give a big thanks to Drunk Deer for sending the A75 over for review, but let's take a closer look to see if this could be your next keyboard. In the package, we have the A75 magnetic keyboard. There's three keycaps for Windows users, and you could use those to replace the option and command keys that are on the keyboard. There's also a keycap puller. There's also a type C to type A braided uh, nylon cable, and this is only a wired keyboard. There's no wireless option, but you can also remove this uh, type A connector here. So you just have a type C to type C cable. The A75 is a 75% layout. It is compatible with Windows and Mac. It has ABS keycaps and it does have magnetic linear switches, which are adjustable. It has an IP66 rating, RGB, but it is wired mode only. The design of the A75 is pretty understated and it actually reminds me of a keyboard from my youth, you know, when I was in computer class at school, which is why I requested the white version of this keyboard. There is also a black version. The only thing that really, you know, makes it pop are these couple of color accents here. It's also not a very heavy keyboard, coming in at around one and a half pounds or 715 grams. And that's due to the ABS plastic build quality on the keyboard. Now that may be a good or bad thing for you, depending on if you like heavier keyboards or not. But you can see if I try to really apply pressure, there's very minimal creaking if you take a look at the bottom here. I can kind of get the plastic to flex, but in general use, there's no way you're gonna have any problems with this. There's an aluminum knob which is knurled, so it has really nice textures and it has hard stops as you rotate it. And this can be used for volume control. And if you press it down, it can be used to play or pause music or video. We have ABS keycaps, which are shine through and they've done a really good job with the RGB on here. The rear of the keyboard has one USB type C port, which is used for the wired connection. There's also two adjustable feet at the bottom of the keyboard, but these are only adjustable in one 10 degree increment. And it does have, you know, rubber padding all around to keep the keyboard planted. The keyboard also uses north facing LEDs. Since the A75 uses that Hall effect sensor to register key presses, you can register a key press in as little as 0.4 millimeters to as much as 3.6 millimeters. So if you're a gamer and you really want, you know, really quick reflexes or really quick registered key presses, you'd hit function two and one, and that'll set the travel distance to 0.4 millimeters. If you're gonna be typing, you could hit function two and nine, and that's gonna set it to 3.6 millimeters of actuation distance before it registers that key press. So if you're someone who has two separate keyboards, one for gaming, one for typing, you no longer need that type of setup because in under a second, you could go from level one through nine by holding function two and cycling through from 0.4 millimeters to 3.6 millimeters. So think about this scenario. You're a gamer. You may want to have WASD as your most sensitive key. So, you know, a light press would register a movement while the other keys are, you know, the normal actuation distance. Or say you're typing and you're always extending your pinky finger over to enter or shift, you can actually change the actuation distance of these keys separately in software and leave everything else the same. Using magnetic switches brings a couple of unique advantages. So one of those is that these switches don't actually require physical contact like a mechanical switch, which would have a metal leaf, pins, and optics. So these actually last twice as long as traditional mechanical switches. The switches are pre-lubed and they do have stabilizers under the wider keycaps and it's such a nice and smooth travel. By the way, these are also dust and water resistant. By the way guys, if you're finding this review helpful or useful, please consider liking and subscribing. It really does help me out, but let's get back into the video. I'm really enjoying the typing experience on the A75 and this is from someone who usually goes for, you know, quieter switches or, you know, low profile keycaps but this really takes me back to my early days on a computer and I just love the chiclet type of feel and noise that it's producing. Movement is really smooth, the keys pop back up really quickly making it ideal for gaming 
or touch typing. I also didn't notice any type of wobble or unevenness on any of the keys. So while I'm not a competitive PC gamer, there's definitely an advantage for those of you who are. The ability to set the key press travel distance to as little as 0.4 millimeters can really improve your responsiveness and speed in a lot of games. So think about a game like Resident Evil 4, where you may have to spam a certain key multiple times to cut a rope or do some type of quick action. It's really easy to spam that key because you don't actually have to bottom out. As soon as you hit 0.4 millimeters, it registers that key press, and as soon as you let go, it resets and it's ready to go again. So my microphone is about 14 inches away from the keyboard and while it may sound a little bit loud in this video, when it's in you know a natural environment like when I'm in my home office, it doesn't sound overly loud to me. So I think if you work somewhere where you know you have your own office or you're in a type of cubicle environment versus an open concept type of area, it should be perfectly fine. It's definitely not the loudest keyboard that I've used. One of the things that really helps cement if a keyboard is good in my books is how well the space bar is stabilized. So you can see anywhere that I hit this space bar, the sound profile sounds exactly the same. There's no type of inconsistency and it doesn't matter if I hit it at the edge, middle, or the other edge, it's a perfectly flat and consistent type of key press. Another thing I look for is the amount of wobble on the space bar so you can see there's a little bit of play here but it in no way affects the typing or sound experience. It's just a very consistent and smooth key press every time. Trunk Gear doesn't recommend disassembling this keyboard due to the makeup of the keyboard and the magnetic nature of it but it does have sound absorbing EVA foam a bottom pad along with an aluminum plate to minimize noise and friction. I've cut the lights to showcase the RGB and really they've done a stellar job and I'm really happy that they went with the shine through keycaps. So to modify the RGB, it's really easy. You would hit function two. You could actually use function one if you map it in the software, but by default it's function two. So pressing function two and down just cuts it or lowers the brightness and up makes it the max. And then you can also change the effects. You can go cycle through them um, this way or the other way. So I'll just go through all of those right now. And these are the stock colors. I can also change the speed of the effect so I could really slow it down or crank it really fast. You can also completely cut the effect or say you see an effect and you like it a certain way, you could go ahead and pause it. The keyboard also appears to have onboard memory because I could easily take this, plug it into another computer and it retains that RGB mode. Let's take a look at the software for the A75. So this is the Antler software. And one thing I wanna point out is that this is the beta two version. It's only for testing. So there is gonna be a finalized version later down the road. So on this general tab, um, I did go ahead and I updated the firmware. You can also reset the computer from software if you like, but um, I just left everything pretty much where it is. Debounce was set to two and I did turn on caps lock LED, but we can also go into the keyboard section here. And this is actually pretty decent software for their first attempt, um, much better than some of the other softwares I've used. So again, we can see that the keyboard is in windows mode. And like I mentioned, if you do function two and hold down M, it's gonna reset that. You can see it says Mac mode. Let me just put it back into Windows mode for the rest of this. And you can see you have all the keys here and you can go ahead and you know remap keys and then you know reset them and what have you. And these are the options you have to pick from. So there's some mouse commands, multimedia, and so on. But what I've done is in function one, I've set it so that if I hit function one and escape, 
what it's gonna do is it's gonna lock the Windows key. So you can see right now on the computer, I can easily go ahead and hit that. However, if I hit function and escape, uh, the Windows key is now disabled. You know, obviously that would be really handy if you're gaming, you don't wanna hit that function key. And what I also use is print screen. I use that a ton. So I've said that so that if I hit function one and the right alt, I can do a print screen. So again, just function and right alt. That'll take a screenshot in it. You can see it's very easy. There are two keys side by side. And that is so unique on this keyboard because you have two function keys, not something I've seen before. But let's go into function two. And you can see this is what was populated before, just brightness up and down and changing the effects. And I added in, you know, speed, pausing, and all that other stuff. And again, you know, you have all these other keys you can go through function one or function two. So you're really never gonna run out of keyboard shortcuts. And then whenever you save something, or sorry, whenever you make a change, you would just hit save and it applies it really quickly. If we go into sensitivity, so this is the part where you may want to play around a lot. We can go ahead and hit from levels one through nine to change the actuation distance. But if I wanted to specifically say, um, change the WASD like I mentioned earlier. Well, I could just do it on the general profile, but I did create a gaming profile and I could hit W and start tracking keystroke. I'll just enable that. And as I hit W, you can see the blue dot is where I'm gonna hit that actuation distance. So I can just change that you know, variable, but if I want it really quick, I'll just leave that right at the top. And the interesting thing here is that as soon as you hit it, hit this W key and you let go, it automatically just reset. You don't have to, you know, bottom out to get a reset. It's resetting as soon as you hit it, that's the reset. So you can see the advantages that that gives you when it comes to gaming. You can also have, you know, different profiles for say typing, say you wanted to have shift to have a lower actuation distance, you could go ahead and do that and save it. And you know, if you don't wanna you know, mess around and do it perky, again, use function one through nine to have it set up where it's you know, across the board. In the LED section, we have a lot of control and we could do the same thing with keyboard commands. So you could change the brightness, speed, same as you can with the keyboard. But if you go all the way to the bottom, there is a custom mode so you could see on here, I've set it so that, you know, all of the keys are one color, but WASD are different. And if I go ahead and save that, you could see that change takes effect there. And then you could select, you know, and change the colors by characters, numerals, big keys, or just all very convenient, very simple to do. And then there's also a macro option as well. So they've thought about pretty much everything with the software, you know, for their first attempt, it's pretty good. The only thing I didn't see here was any type of control for this adjustment knob. So this seems to be hard coded just for volume control, or you could press it in or out to play and resume, you know, media. The one thing that I wanted to mention though, is that as you rotate this, there's no type of overlay or on-screen display that comes on to let you know kind of what volume level you're at. So that's something I'd like to see in a future version of the software. So while the Drunk Deer A75 may look like a lot of other keyboards out there, it is truly a unique keyboard that has something really special under the hood. And again, I can't overstate, you know, if you're a gamer, the ability to just adjust that actuation or travel distance on the fly for your key presses and then you know just go back into a regular typing mode without switching any of the switches um that's really a game changer and you know there's not a lot of other keyboards out there that'll give you that type of competitive edge in gaming also because these magnetic switches don't have as much you know moving components to them they have double the lifespan of the traditional mechanical switch. So if you've ever been curious about a magnetic keyboard, the Drunk Deer A75 is definitely the place to start. And right now this keyboard is on sale, but you can also get an additional discount if you use my coupon code DCT, you can get an additional 30% off, which brings it to around 104 US and pre-orders are open right now for the A75. But yeah guys, let me know what you think of the Drunk Deer A75. Does it offer enough to make you seriously consider going to a magnetic switch keyboard over a mechanical keyboard? And if you found this review helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. I'm always doing these type of videos and I'll see you in the next one soon.